All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Tipples Virtual Wine Tasting with Elizabeth and Jeff Vaudre from Tipples Brews and Wines in Gainesville, Florida. Let's jump in and taste this wonderful wine this week. We are going, actually, for the first time in all of these that we've done, this is crazy, Burgundian Rouge, right? Mm -hmm. Burgundian Pinot Noir. Okay. Cool. So um, this week, uh, we were drinking the Maison Rouge. De Berlin Pinot Noir from Bourgogne, France. Right. All right. We'll talk about, well, where's Bourgogne? Where is Bourgogne? Oh, we'll find out. Okay. All right. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and pop that bottle of wine. I like to take my, especially my old world wines, mm -hmm. down to around 60 degrees, okay. which is a European cellar temperature, right. to start. They're going to warm up to 70-ish okay. degrees in our houses in Florida, but... Uh, it's a nice start. Yep. Let's pour when you. When you said old wood, I was only half paying attention to what you're saying. I was like, if he, is he going to call me old wife? My old, I like to take my old wife. My old wife yep. likes wines at these temperatures. I do. <laughs> no. <laughs> old world. Wow. All right. So um, please bring up the first slide. Okay. I chill mine for about 30 minutes in the refrigerator to get it down to 60 degrees, by the way. I don't remember if I said that. You, so. you did. With this. All right, so. And then you said it would heat up to about 70 in yeah. our houses. Mm -hmm. true. All right, ratings. Uh, Willy Wong gave this guy a 90. So putting it up there in a nice upper echelon area. Uh, food pairings. Stuffed mushrooms. Bacon-wrapped scallops. Broiled salmon, apricot glazed pork tenderloin. So that all sounds good. Right. A red wine, but on the medium to lighter side. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with some lighter I proteins. I would love to have some stuffed mushrooms with this. That'd be fantastic. I, I do too. I, you know, when mm -hmm. I wrote that last week, my intention was to pick some up so we could have them. But yeah, I think they have them like so you can still have them like at right. Whole Foods and That's what I was thinking. Yeah, get some good ones and mm -hmm. just do that. Yep. I didn't fall through. So. Okay. It was my birthday. <laughs> it was your birthday. Right. We are now a year apart again. Right. Um, all right. So we covered this. Let's go ahead and stop sharing. We'll talk about this wine. Okay. Uh, this is a 100% Pinot Noir. All Pinot Noir grapes. Alcohol content, 13%. Oh, that is really pretty That's and fragrant. Nice. Right? Mm -hmm. um, age worthiness. Let's take a sniff. You said 13 and a half percent? 13 percent even. 13 percent even. Okay. Hmm. All right. What do you think on age? Because you really jumped right in on this last week. <laughs> so now that's the thing. Um, gosh. It's kind of on the low side for ABV as far as... Um, like reds go period um and i find it somewhat acidic but mm -hmm. not overly acidic um five years all right i like the call I'm going on the low end right. for it yeah I, I'm I, saying I, it doesn't fine. have to be dry right the second but i mean but if it's five years then that would be in the sweet spot right now i guess right in the middle because it's only two years it's only two right. but based on your your um response i'm thinking it's got to be more like 10 uh yes okay yeah, yeah. all right so i give it it's a it's one of those that's ready to drink now mm -hmm. it'll hang out for 10 years not meant for 20 at all right okay. not not meant for that um, really nice amount of acid. You like to say um, alcohol adequate. Mm -hmm. um, tannins. Oh yeah, I didn't mention the tannins. There are tannins. There's solid um, tannins, yeah. right? So between the tannins and the acidity, keeping it a fresh red fruited wine. Okay. All right, it'll hang out for a bit. Yeah. It evolves. So, okay. Yeah. This guy can hang out for you know up to ten years, probably more five to eight. Okay. You know, I would say because I ten was, to me, I would be a ten minus. At right? first, I was going to say seven, and then I thought, well, we never say seven. That's like a weird. Yeah. Thing. No. No. I actually, you're right. Like, I would go like a ten minus, right? Okay. So more like seven eight. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, oak on this guy. Is there oak? 
Okay, I just want to make it clear that you don't get to like quiz. No, no, I'm not going to quiz you. I, I, I will answer this. Okay. All right. I'm just, this is what I That's am about to discuss. Right. Yeah. Here is the next, the next thread of discussion. Because I will oh, leave. All right. <laughs> um, yes, there is oak on okay. this wine. Right. It is French oak. Zero uh percent -huh. of it is new oak. So it's a subtle French oak. You're going to get it to where it rounds out the tannins a little bit. And mostly it's going to add some spiciness to the wine, mm -hmm. which really jumps up in the aromas. It's really like a nice baking spice, crayon raspberry thing going on. Yeah, I feel like I get that more too, like when I'm chewing the wine, mm -hmm. it really comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. So crayon raspberries, baking spice, and earthiness on the palate, right? And so the others I get nose to palate. On the palate, on the palate though, I would add a nice earthy quality to it, okay. like a, a soil kind of thing. A soil? Soil, a soil, a soil. Okay, thing. I thought you said soil. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know what soil is. It's soil and green. Soil is the wine term of the week. We'll come to that in a few <laughs> slides. <laughs> You just need something up. That's right. I'll come up with something. So. Hmm. When were you saying you got the soil on the nose or? Chewing on the palate. Mid to back on the taste. Mm -hmm. And honestly, really nice tannins in this for a Pinot Noir. It actually surprising. Right? Mm -hmm. And kind of some nice grip on there mm -hmm. that, you know, that can go with, you yeah. know, with some of the, you know, honestly, this would stand up to uh, filet mignon. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. This would stand up to the well, yeah, low fat beef, which some Pinots can, some mm -hmm. cannot. Okay. I would say this one has got some beautiful extraction and color. Yes, you can see through it, but it's actually a little difficult. Mm -hmm. So this is a little, I would say, especially for Burgundian mm -hmm. Pinot Noir, right? Definitely a little more on the burly side, okay. you know, kind of a nice, nice one for Americans. So, um, Pinot, is that one of the ones that you've said can go with Thanksgiving before? I can't yes, remember. yes, it can. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this one, what mm -hmm. would you think? Because it is like, it's more tannic. Right. This like one. Food. All right. This one. I'm of two minds on this. Okay. All right. Because Americans love tannins. Yes. Okay. Right. But technically it's a little bit burly for Turkey. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So right. technically so the, palate, yes, the American okay. palate. Yeah. They'll be fine. Okay. But, but technically, you know, I, I would say it's a little big okay. for Thanksgiving. Okay. Mm -hmm. But for some of us who will literally drink a big red with anything. Yes. All right. Then this would be something you're like, I drank Pinot with Thanksgiving. Yes, you did. That's super classic. <laughs> okay. And you're like, my little secret. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, I, but I like that about this one. One would think maybe I chose it. Um, anyway. Just like. I'm, just I'm glad bit. you're enjoying it. I am enjoying it. <laughs> because, you know, for you, Pinos are not automatic wins, right? So. Yeah, although actually I'm beginning to like them more. And that more. happens. Mm -hmm. That happens with wine drinking. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So we've covered that. Thoughts from you guys with what you're tasting. I've thrown a lot of things on the table. You can just nod and agree, or you can throw out your own observations. Nod and agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was going to say. David's doing the same but, thing. But no one can refute. All right. I didn't put that as an option. You see that? I don't want any of that. <laughs> okay. So I think it's Sherry. Sherry. Yep. She's in charge of the keyboard, so sure. it could be somebody else, but <laughs> okay, Laura. <laughs> so you're going red cherry or black cherry on this guy? Red. Red. I yeah, get I'm like red, good. juicy cherries mm -hmm. on the more on the nose, but still. Mm -hmm. No, I agree 100%. Yeah, and Chris and Robin are agreeing with that as well. Right. Right? And yeah. that yeah, that happens kind of simultaneously with her saying it. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Agree and with and I like the call too, because the color is a little bit more like black cherry, right? Mm -hmm. But the palette 
with that minerality coming in, lifts it up, some minerality, some acid to more of a red cherry. cherry, And I agree 100% on that. Absolutely. It's just like she said, it's just a brighter. Yeah, it's a bright, delightful red cherry. Yeah. In addition to those spices and then kind of an earthiness to anchor it. Now I've had Pinot Noir that is much earthier. It gets much earthier than this. And and they kind of split for me into Mm -hmm. two sides, which is like wet earth, Okay. Or dry earth, which is more like fall leaves. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So this one, I would say, also splits the difference. It's there. It's kind of like it's earth. You know, it's you know, it's not quite really mushroomy wet earth, but it and it's not autumn leaves. It kind of sits in the middle. So, all right, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, so. Label review. So uh, I will start with the Maison Roche de Berlin, right? Mm-hmm. So we've, this is the winemaker right there. Bourgogne. So I was going to say Bourgogne. What is Bur- Bourgogne is the French word for Burgundy. Okay. So it's from Burgundy. Okay. That's what that means is from the region of Burgundy in France. And I love that this is like, wait a minute. Look, Ma, it says Pinot Noir on the, it says the name of the this grape on the label. You should say that and not forget to say that. Yeah, it is. Look, Ma, it says the name of the grape, and it's a French wine. Because the French are very famous, as are the Italians, for not putting the name of the grape right. on the label. It's the region. So they have the region, Portugal. Mm-hmm. Um, They also have, which I guarantee you the importer had something to say about that. He said, <laughs> look. Americans love to know what they're drinking. Right, right. right. So. I honestly don't know why anyone would not want to know what they're drinking, but it's fine. Well, <laughs> here's their side, right? Their side is, it's Burgundian Rouge. Everyone knows that's Pinot. Okay. Right? Yeah, but... But they, not everyone knows that, right? right? As you get in there and you get out of the area. So... It's very in, much a different thing if you've grown up as a child drinking wine and learning all of it, which throughout Europe they they do right but that doesn't happen in American culture so if you're just getting into it in your some of them some people 20s but not many really right it's going to be more like later 30s or 40s that you're getting into it well you don't have all the history of not that you haven't drunk wine before but of picking good wines right you know well and and we have this dichotomy in France right where we say okay um, Bordeaux mm-hmm. is famous for its red blends, right? Mm-hmm. And white blends for that. Sure. It's blending. Right. And Burgundy, no blending, right? So mm-hmm. there are extremes on both sides. And Burgundy, if it's red, it's Pinot Noir. 100%. This is a dumb question. So, because um, you have probably said it before, but Bordeaux, older winemaking region than burgundy then no honestly that's a great question okay. and i've never compared the origin stories okay. of both regions to say oh yeah this one's older than that one because i thought that that's a great question i i don't know thank you uh, i thought that when we started doing single varietals in california they were kind of like wait what are you doing oh yeah no certainly but but if they're already doing it in france but with those grape varietals, right? So oh, specifically. it was specifically those. So they're saying, what do you mean single Cabernet Sauvignon? No, that needs help from Cab Franc and Petit okay. Verdot and Malbec, that kind of a thing. Okay, all right. So, so yeah, they, they felt very strongly about that. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So, um, all right, so continuing on here, Cuvée Reserve, right? All right, so Cuvée means a blending. Mm-hmm. In this case, it's a blending of regions throughout burgundy okay all right so um but all pinot but all pinot okay. right so they're negotiate this is a negotiant it's on the back um it is a it actually it, i like that it says it right there maison right. versus right. Right. negotiant right so negotiant means they have long-term contracts with growers and they buy their grapes for this mm-hmm. wine now this this winery also has some estate things, but this is not one of those. So this is a purchased grape wine, Mm -hmm. but they crush, make the wine off. They take it all from there. Okay. So they are responsible for what we're doing. And those contracts are very much involved with how the wine 
about how the wine grapes are grown as well. So yes, they don't own the dirt, but they are involved all the way through it sure. with what they're putting in the bottle. Okay. So, so um, the reserve is probably something thrown on there for Americans because that is not a term that means anything in France or in the United States. Okay. There's no definitive late, you know, uh, rule there's no rule about what that word would mean okay cuvee all right multiple locations mm -hmm. within burgundy so uh vin de bourgogne so a wine of burgundy but this is like the label because it's not a flashy label that's kind of typical of france like, oh yeah sometimes they'll have like um chateau right something. there would be a chateau behind it mm -hmm. right that right. would be the only thing missing right so that would be the one also visually mm -hmm. the one nod to the american side would not to be, you know, not to have a chateau behind oh, okay. it. Okay. Right. Okay. So on the back, this is actually really, really interesting. Um, so they give a ton of information do. about the specifics of this thing. Hey, it's all Pinot. Um, the um, average age of the grape vines mm -hmm. is on there. So you get this great, this, you can see they are, when I talk about negotiant doesn't mean that they have nothing to do with the grapes right. and they just go pick something up. They know their grapes. Right. These are long-term contracts. So you do know, you so. think like this is um, styled after like a, an American FDA food label that maybe because they, I could certainly the front is for Americans. Right. So the whole it, thing maybe or not. It could they, be, maybe it's inspired because this gives a lot more information than almost all American ones. Right. Yeah, I mean, it goes into there. It's like it, it tells you the uh, it's native yeast. Um, wow, picked by hand. The um, the date it was picked. Uh, it's it's awesome. I mean, a it's a real deep dive into some information really quickly, right? The, if all the labels gave that all of that, you know, or at least a, even a fraction of that, right? No, I love this label. This label makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. So if I were to Bring it all back together. I think that's a great label. If I'm seeing Pinot Noir, France, and maybe I'm new to French Pinot Noir, but mm -hmm. I can see all this information is included. I'm feeling good about this purchase. Okay. And the thing with Burgundian Rouge, right, mm -hmm. is it is it commands a higher price point. Okay. Right. So what we're drinking tonight is basically an entry level Burgundian. Okay. And it's for many wine purchases you mm -hmm. know um it's significantly more okay than than a lot of you know more casual purchases of even pinot noir pinot noir is the most expensive grape to grow in the world between the yields and the work it takes to grow them it's a difficult grape to work with i didn't realize it was the most expensive that's interesting yeah, yeah. so um question about the bottle itself mm -hmm. this light green color mm -hmm. Um, I guess I haven't paid attention lately, but don't we aren't reds normally in much darker yeah. bottles? In France, there's different regions that all choose different colors. Oh, okay. Kind of it doesn't yeah. affect the wine. It's dark enough. Okay. Yeah, it's dark yeah. enough. Okay. Because it's not something that's going to sit there for 25 years. Right. Yeah. If it if it were, do you have to have a darker one? No, it's not as much. I mean, there's no hops in here. So that's the big thing, like with color and okay. and really blocking out light. If you're going it's to age a wine. It is because in beer, they kind of expect that people will not follow directions and will put it in a bunch of light, right? Because it's okay. not going to last very long. Okay. They expect to drink it fresh and they okay. put it in a fridge with lots of lights on it, right? right? So with wine, it's a little bit more of, hey, if you're going to age this at all, mm -hmm. you're going to put it into a dark cubby. Okay. We respect that you will not leave it with lights on it you know, or in the sunshine, okay. right? So. Okay. Um, I think it's more of that, like, mm -hmm. or it's like I would never dream someone would, you know, yeah. misbehave with my wine that way, right? We have to take our wine back out of the the porch area. Then. Oh my god, <laughs> that reminds me of a story I'll tell after we're off. Okay, camp. all right. Okay. So, anyway, cool. loving this. By the way, imported by the Lucen Brothers. You know, so all the uh, the German, yeah, the German wines. Interesting. Yeah. So, they knew a good bottle of wine when they find it. Would you like me to advance the slides? Yes, please. Okay. All right. Pinot Noir, great. Or origin, Burgundy in France. So the origin is this region of France, mm -hmm. which I would call Eastern Central. 
Okay. We'll look at a map. Yeah, and this is darker than that picture. Right. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you were noting earlier, it's this one's a little darker. So it's um, its name Pinot Noir mm -hmm. actually is named for black pine cone for the okay. conical shape of the grapes okay. as they go, and their color. So also called Pinot Nero in Italy and Spatbergunder in Germany, which means late ripening. Oh, that's right. Which is a very important part of what Pinot Noir is. That one's the most fun to say. Spatbergunder. Oh, German words are the best. Yes. I love them. Mm -hmm. um, it is the world's favorite medium to light bodied red wine. Uh, and low tannin usually let's say low to medium okay and i do like the medium and medium plus mm -hmm. i've cut occasionally gotten a little bit more of a, a burly pinot noir and i don't know label me americana it's fine but i like it mm -hmm. you know i like it the other way too higher acid as a whole in the red uh, mm -hmm. grapes Likes cool temperatures and long ripening so that's the late that's ripening it takes. it takes a while of cooler not very high it will grow in warmer temperatures right but if you get a let's call it a californian pinot noir table wine version mm -hmm. some very inexpensive grown warm in a valley so they can do a lot it will taste nothing like the nuances that you're going to get out of pinot, okay. pinot noir like chardonnay is wonderfully expressive of the area it comes from okay uh, but if you overripen it, just like Chardonnay, it can become a flabby, uninteresting mess. Okay. Right. So, so expressive of the area it comes from, meaning both the climate and the terroir. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Exactly. Now, um, just pointing out, not to correct. All right, not correcting because I prefer to use it that way. Also, technically, terroir is all of that together. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I only think of it as like. The earth. earth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Because it's talking about terroir, right? Right. It, the, the cognate is the terra, is, yeah. the terra mm -hmm. is the earth. But it is uh terroir is actually the climate, the weather, the minerals, and the um and the height and, and the um altitude. altitude. Really? It's all of it. Terroir is all of it. Huh. It's okay. Okay. Things. So if I want to split it up like that, I say I just say terroir to be inclusive of everything, or right. I could say climate and earth or land Cli climate, or climate. Yeah, soil. climate. Right. Yeah. I, I I would go soil, I think. Okay. Yeah. Climate. And, and I agree because for most discussion mm -hmm. purposes, you're going to want to break it out right. and not just, you know, it just is. Right. You're right. You know, the reality is if you just bang out terroir, most people are with you only for the soil, maybe the soil and alt mm -hmm. altitude. Um, when in fact, technically, the word includes, is it what's the facing to the sun? What's the, okay. you know? Okay. Yeah, so, well, I appreciate that you didn't want to correct me. But see, during this hour, you get to. That's this is the hour, one hour a week that you get to just like throw out corrections. I'm not saying that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. It's a sense of place. There we go. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Sorry, I was enjoying it. Please. Yes, please. All right, primary flavors. Cherry, raspberry, covered those, right? Mm -hmm. Mushroom is more... That earthy? The earthy side, okay. right? And so, and it runs to me, I would call it earth and go earth to wet, you know, wet earth, which is mushroom, mm -hmm. or earth to dry earth, which is fall dried leaves. Vanilla, it is very easy to overwhelm Pinot Noir with oak. There's a lot of very vanilla quality Pinot Noir, and I'm not saying it's bad, but I am going to say it is not a French style usually. Okay. Right? So if you get a vanilla Pinot Noir, it's almost certainly New World. I feel like I'm getting um, a floral note on the nose where I wasn't before. Oh, I like the hibiscus thing, right? It'll give me a little, little thinking moment, right? Go back yeah, in on it. I'm getting it and. On the taste, mm. the nose, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of floral. I would almost go cherry blossom on this guy, but okay, it's a bit yeah. richer. I can go hibiscus, but. But I could go cherry blossom, thinking about that. Um, dryness, yes. Medium bodied, yes. Uh, medium to low tannin, I give this guy all the way up to medium. Uh, medium to high acidity, I give this guy down to medium. 
not medium hot. Yeah, I, for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's a bump up on the tannin for this one versus general, right? Yeah. And a little bump low on the acidity. And then ABV, because Pinot is a little it's bit more of a delicate, you know, uh, red, a little less sugar. We'll talk about the structure in a minute. Yeah, we're up on the higher end for Pinot. So and Pinot can age. Let me ask you a question. Wine folly. Because you mentioned specifically like Pinot can be overwhelmed with vanilla and stuff if you're using a different oak. Right. So when they are doing this taste profile, are they doing it from a new world perspective or an old world perspective? This looks like, like an aggregate to me. Okay. Yeah. They just took it and went, yeah. what's like, the average or, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What in general are we going to get? And I find that I'm able to pull off of what they choose. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Here's where we're relating it to this wine. Okay. I think they do a beautiful job. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Next one, please. All right. So the origin is in Burgundy. So here we are. Like I said, I call it Central Eastern mm -hmm. France. So the origin is here where it is originally grown and dominantly grown in the world. So... And here's the breakdown, you know, visually in there. So France, dominantly, USA, mm -hmm. Germany. I'm surprised. Right? Yeah. I think that's awesome. And Moldova is more than Italy. That's, yeah, that's crazy, right? Because, well. I mean, I've had a decent amount of Pinot Nero, but I don't know what they call it in Moldova. I haven't had it. They're not exporting it. Okay. So um, then we get down to New Zealand. They grow beautiful Pinot Noir in New Zealand. Is theirs, because Australian wines tend to be like higher ABV, is theirs like on the heavy, like 13 and a half percent, do you know? New Zealand mm -hmm. is more cool and delicate, like okay. a Burgundian. Okay, what about right. Australia? Australia is both. It splits okay. because they have their different areas, right? Okay. I have one called Giant Steps from mm -hmm. Australia that you would swear was from Burgundy. Okay. Yeah. So do you think that like New Zealand is like that because they're like, it's colder? It's cooler, much yeah. cooler there. Okay. It's perfect for, for the okay. So, others is a pretty large percentage. That is there. pretty large. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a big part of the board. Same as Chile, Switzerland, Australia, yeah. and New Zealand put together. Well, you know, so, so, I'm looking here and I see Chile, right? Mm -hmm. And Chile makes some really good pinot. They're cool. Mm -hmm. They should almost work on that a little bit more. It just makes total sense. You should probably call them. I, honestly, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of tips for Chile. Yeah, yeah. I do. You need to work on your Pinot a little bit more. Yeah. So one of those in the others is mm -hmm. Argentina. Okay. So where in Argentina is the question, right? Mm -hmm. Not Mendoza, south of Mendoza where it gets cooler in the Patagonian region. Oh, okay. Have so, we I don't know. We have not had a Patagonian Pinot Noir, but we will. They're delicious. Okay. And then within Australia, you've got certain regions in the on the, the main continent, mm -hmm. but what's up and coming there is Tasmania. Oh, that's right. Tasmania. Oh, yeah. All right, fine, fine. All right. So I will cycle them in because Jake was giving me trouble over the fact, he was giving me crap over. He's like, you know, you have not done enough Pinot Noir. So we need to do the Tasmanian. We do. And you have to have, like, somewhere in the presentation, the you have to have the um, cartoon Tasmanian Devil. Don't give it away now. Oh, okay. Sorry. You know, I'm going to look up a drunk Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> All right. And put it in the thing. All right. It has, All right. To, it has to go with the, um, the kangaroos. The kangaroos. Oh, okay. I love that. Okay. Okay, so next, to, to, let me see what we've gone through here. Oh, so the U.S. You see, U.S. is number two. U.S. is fairly recently number two. Oh, really? Within a certain event, cultural event in this country. So there were a lot of a French grape torn out. Oh, <laughs> and replaced with Pinot Noir. When people stopped, yes, it was Merlot. It was the downfall of Merlot was the rising in the United, the, the uh, yeah, the increase for Pinot Noir. Interesting. Yeah, they okay. were literally tearing out Pinot Noir grapevines. I'm um, excuse me, Merlot no, grapevines and replacing them with Pinot. The rise of Pinot is directly related to the, to the fall of Merlot. Interesting. So everybody who was already 
growing Pinot, they watched sideways and went, oh, yeah. Yes, we're on this. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Malolactic fermentation. This guy, one of the items on the back was it's a 100% malolactic fermentation. Okay. So all of the juice was subjected to malolactic fermentation. Okay. What is malolactic fermentation? Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we talk about often with Chardonnay. Okay. All right. So in malolactic fermentation, it's accomplished by a bacterium, not a yeast. Oh, okay. So technically it's not fermentation. Okay. Fermentation is yeast eats sugar, sugar turns into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. In this case, you have a bacterium that eats malolactic, malic acid, which mm -hmm. is really tart. Okay. Smooths it out and gets <laughs> excretes, and excretes lactic acid. Lactic acid and carbon dioxide. So it's very similar. Excretions. So lactic is lactic is from like it's the same acid in milk. Right. It smooths out the wine. Okay. Add some weight to the body. Okay. Um, and just you know, kind of makes it a little more pleasurable and less tart and, and okay. biting, right? All right, less bitey. Hold on, we have a chat here. Um, see the joke that Pinot is his favorite and it's thin skinned and so is he. That's just screenwriting, baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, those tannins are really continuing to be awake and, and step up. It's getting the earthiness is coming out a little more. I would say some nice minerality, even beyond just an earthiness in there. Mm. raspberry you know raspberry cherry it's 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 definitely very much a food wine mm -hmm. like I, I really want to pair this with some food so. what are we paired with tonight do you know it's not going to pair well it's not the best okay. you know so <laughs> <laughs> well it's because ours is always like spin the wheel does it does it well we have sure not right we have somebody who makes it really really nice my mother is an excellent cook right and she makes dinner for us because we're so busy getting prepared for these right. things so right. it's it's all right but with the food pairings or with salmon you know it, it would just be amazing okay so what she gave us last week yes her, the salmon you know, last week oh, would have this been week. on point <laughs> so anyway um i thought that was kind of a fun thing that and there's, so there's a oh, deep dive. We've never covered malolactic fermentation. So, all right. Uh, next one, please. Yep. Can't wait to tell Jake that he is. He was called thin-skinned in the uh, in the tasting. <laughs> <laughs> he can dish it out, but he can't take it. So, what do we have going on here? It's a thin-skinned red, but an intense-skinned red, right? So we get a lot of color and flavor out of that skin, mm -hmm. the very black skin, like that black pine cone, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not thick skin, so you don't get a ton of tannin. You can manipulate, you know, you can you can work it and grow it with thyme and well-grown grapes with a really good location, and you can get a lot more tannin in here like we get. Right. Right. When you grow it quickly in warm temperatures, like I talked about, no tannin. Okay. There's none. Not a Okay. Right. So it's just like more watery and it's yeah, it's more thin, watery, tastes like a pleasant combination of cherry and strawberry. It's pleasant. Okay. But there's not more than that. So anyway, and then it tends to have on the intermediate zone toward the inside, you know, this grape likes to keep that because it keeps that acidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, have we talked about isn't this like a is this one of the ones that's a smaller grape or not? This one is Actually, it's, just it's, it's pretty okay. pretty standard. All right. So I was just confusing it with something else. Hmm. All right. Next one. All right. Where in the world are we? Where we start with the northern growing latitude. Mm -hmm. France, right about here. Yeah. So the upper quarter. Mm -hmm. Um, Burgundy, right? So and look, bones right there. It's so, so interesting to me that there's nothing like right around from Paris, you know? It's all yeah, it's all fairly uh, south right. or east of Paris, but right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there they are. And then you've got Chablis, you got Champagne up there, which you can see why it would be so much cooler. Right, right. But uh mm -hmm. yeah, they're running into issues like you see Sancerre for Sauvignon Blanc. Right. 
is way over here next to Chablis, which this shows you why New Zealand is so good with Chardonnay, mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, and Pinot Noir. It's the same temperature. They're all there. right here. And it's right about exactly the same as this region. Okay. And this region just points the way. Right. Because they all grow in a similar area. That's where they are. Right. Okay. So I've heard of Alsace, but Jura? What's in Jura? Uh, there's actually some really, really cool. Really? Yeah, cool wines in there. So um, you get a lot of, you get kind of a combination of mm -hmm. some Chardonnay, but there's, um, I can't think of the name of it. There's this one grape. I think it starts with a T that is in Jura that I've been meaning for us to trust. Oh, okay, so write down Jura. Yeah. Jura T. That's right. Gosh, is that it? Anyway, Jura. It, you did that last time. It's something like completely different. Wine. I know, right? I'm just writing Jura white wine. There's there's, okay. there's the grape there. Okay. Um, Jura is really, really cool. And I've had some, and even their Chardonnay has a completely different expression. Okay. Something you've never had before. All right. I'm excited. So. I mean, we are almost three years into right. this experience. We got to get out there and get some Tasmanian stuff. Tasmania. Some, yes. Right. Well, exactly. I'm going to be circling the globe here. Soon. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, do, 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 next. Do. Yes, please. All right. So here we are. Um, we are centered in bone here. So you guys have all been thoroughly boned. Um, and that is the region we are in tonight um, within Burgundy, all right? And then I put it here again too. So Bourgogne, mm -hmm. because I, you know, I want you to know when you see Bourgogne on there, it's not within Burgundy, that's Burgundy that as a well. whole, right? Okay. So, uh, and the reason we would say a cuvee in Bourgogne and Burgundy is because they're based here. They're probably getting, you know, they're going over the borders okay. to grab some additional grapes, right? So, um, do, 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 on the, all right. So in Burgundy, in this area, there is just for the red grapes, Pinot Noir. Boom, that's it. Wow. White grapes, Chardonnay, that's it. And when it's in the bottle, oh, sorry. It's when fine. it's in the bottle, it's 100%. That's it. There's no blending in here. Okay. Um, they just do such a good job of it. They right. don't feel like it needs to be that, that is store. That, that is their identity. And that's why when they say, most of them would say Burgundian Rouge. That's it. Burgundian because Blanc. that is the only red there. Right. The so for them, they're like, well, obviously, if you're drinking a Burgundy, you know something about the place. It's all we grow. Right. But that's an overstatement. Now that you're in the world, right, all of these ideas mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. came into play when the world was a much smaller place. Well, sure. Yeah. You weren't sending wine all over the world. No. I mean... Mm -hmm. It was just in that region, and then it was just in that country. And I mean, to export right. it completely across the world, right? Wasn't thought of exactly. So here you see Paris is up here, Chablis is up here, mm -hmm. Chablis, of course, Chardonnay, yeah. the Chardonnay that you like. <laughs> so, yeah, Sancerre, Sauvignon Blanc, and some Pinot Noir. Um, so here's all Pinot and Chardonnay, and then you go down to Beaujolais, mm -hmm. and you have one of the greatest wines for Thanksgiving, which is Gamay is the grape. Well, that's right. They just call it Beaujolais, mm -hmm. right? And they have sub-regions in here, which are awesome, too. Uh, you said we are doing a Thanksgiving tasting, yes. right? Yes, on the 20th. Okay, so that's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and there will be a wonderful selection there. Okay, cool. Including definitely Beaujolais. All right. So bone. All right. So I wanted to kind of jump in and look at once again, you get kind of this valleys, rolling hills, beautiful area. Um, a couple quick looks. There we go. That's like a bad visit to me. I mean, we never have an area with um, great vines that or you know, actual vineyards and stuff that you think oh, we want to visit there. Right. Well. <laughs> Jumia, it's a desert. Yeah, well. Yeah. So, all right. I mean, they have wine. 
So. But they have wine, so and donkeys, evidently, because that was one hill. He was like, "There was nothing here but donkeys," and I decided to plant. Donkeys are very sure-footed. Yeah. I mean, you know, you right. want to go up a mountain, go on a donkey. Much more sure-footed than a horse. So, French <laughs> wine classifications. We okay. do a little bit of this, right? Mm -hmm. So they're based on regions. So we have the IGP, which is basically it's in France. Okay. All right. So Vin that's not Vin de France. And Vin de France is kind of outside there. IGP is a very general area. It's like, okay. okay. Um, but in Burgundy, it does not get less specific than regional special classification AOP. Okay. So Burgundy is here and deeper, which we go here, right? Mm -hmm. So Burgundy starts at the AOP, which is like what we're drinking tonight. Okay. It's Bourgogne. Right. Okay, so is that like oh, that area, the regional AOP that's um, like Burgundy, but Cuvée? Yeah, okay. no, but it wouldn't have to be. It okay. could be a single vineyard, but not be in any of the specific sub regions. Oh, okay, you know, okay. Right? It could just be in Burgundy, but no, normally it will be a Cuvée. Okay. Normally, that's why that would be there. Okay, because other than that, you will get into the into the next one, which is the communal, mm -hmm. which they call village. Okay. So what we would see is if you see village, it's a little tighter circle of where it's coming from. Still often a cuvee of multiple vineyards. Okay. But within... Is it spelled like village? Yeah. Okay. It's spelled exactly like village. Okay. It's, All right. But it's not. <laughs> it's village. Okay. It's very important. All right. All right. So then you get to <laughs> Premier Cru, right? So now you're getting tighter in again, so in an even more prestigious area. Um, you could still get a cuvee of locations in okay. Premier Cru. Usually not, more unusual. Okay. Because, but if you did, they would all be within the special area, right? Okay. And then you have Grand Cru, which is almost always just single, single vineyard. Vineyard. Right. Okay. Now, it still would be technically possible to have a couple of different Grand Crews. Really? And you can grab the grapes from the two different ones. Okay. Right? But um, but much more, less likely. So the all these designations are all based on location. Okay. Do you notice one thing that's not ever specified in these French guidelines? Great. Quality. Oh. They never say a guarantee of a certain quality. We're tasting these grapes, and therefore, then and no, it's only, which is a very old world thing. The grapes are from this region, they're going to be spectacular. Okay. Right. You need to know your regions. If you don't know it, then. Right. Well, but the thing is, because of that, you can actually get a significant variation in very expensive wine. Huh. So it's one of those things where you can explore and maybe get an idea of where you like the quality of grapes does it but... say any of that on the bottle no no so how do you know if they have these designations oh no it, no if it says if if they have if they're village, grand crew. village will be on the bottle grand crew premier crew will all be on the bottle oh, okay. oh they may get loud and clear oh, because okay. that's a big okay. selling point okay yeah all right so um the monks that were making the wine there first were the ones that took meticulous notes about the quality of growing areas. And so things like Premier Cru meant cardinal quality mm. and Grand Cru meant Pope quality. Okay. Yes. So, so everyone. All comes back to the monks. We can thank the Catholic Church for wine. Many things. Yeah. And some things not so much. But, but no, we're just going to focus on the positive. That's right. Wine and beer. But that's true, wine and beer. All right, so Maison Roche de Berlin Winery, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the Potel, not Patel, mm -hmm. the Potel family. Okay. Right. So uh, family winemakers began in 1964 okay. with Gerard and Francois Potel. Uh, in the beginning, all the wines were produced on family owned estates. But the second generation, Nicholas traveled the world, worked in Australia, in California, multiple places mm -hmm. in France, and really learned about the world of winemaking okay. and began the negotiants uh, side of the business in addition to the estate side of the business okay. and expanded it greatly from there. In 2008, Maison Roche Berlin was born. Berlin, by the way, is the old French 
name for Bonn, which is also a city, okay. not just the region. Okay. And it's in Bonn, right? Mm -hmm. So, shocker. Do we know what this graphic is? No. Oh, okay. I couldn't find anything. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. just a tragedy. Because it's, I mean, it's very interesting. It reminds me of, well, it reminds me of Greek gods and Roman gods. Right. So that wouldn't be French, but. Yeah, yeah. they're just. I couldn't find any information on okay. why it is what it is. I'm sure that we could ask. Yeah. You know, we, we could ask him. We could ask Nicholas, right? Mm -hmm. or, um, so there he is. There's the man who created it in 2008. He created this separate division of the company in addition to just getting started with Negotiant. And the rest is history. And they're making some great wine. And you can go up the totem pole, right? You mm -hmm. can stay with this winery going all the way up to very high level, you know, uh, Grand Cru okay. that they control. Wow. But so you can just, you know, mm -hmm. if you if you find something you like here, you can work within, which I think is fun. Yeah. And that is that. That's the uh, the whole spiel. That's, okay. So before all, we move on. Yep. Okay. Any questions, comments, pairings? I see a hand. There we go. Robin and Chris. Oh, so the, that hand was actually uh, uh, actually from a little bit ago. So I oh, think we didn't see it that. was um, it was it was when we you mentioned about even, the uh, uh, Burgundy Rouge. It's, it's it's all Pinot, and I was like, but white Burgundy is Chardonnay. I thought, and I was like, it's white Burgundy, white Pinot, and I sort of had a a, a brief moment of. I wouldn't say uh, an existential crisis, but I was like, <laughs> this whole time? And I had like, so I, I raised my hands and I was like doing a brief search to be like, I have, I, am I going crazy? Um, but then you eventually, like when you talked about the region, it was like, now it's, it's Chardonnay. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> the second I was just like, this whole time I've been drinking white Pinot and I never knew. Um, I, I like this. I think this is a little young for what I really like about um, Pinot's. Um, I think it's sort of like some of the characteristics are like turned up like a little bit across like, oh, it's slightly more acidic or it's slightly more cherry for or fruity or something else like that kind of across the board. And like there is some earthiness and there is some like... Uh, you know, dried leaves, all those other things, but not as much as I uh, normally see. So I'm like, I really like this, but I'm like, I want to see this again in like a year or two and see if it's like smoothed out a little bit. Um, uh, we had it with a uh, pork chops, and I think it went brilliantly with it. Oh yeah, that'd yeah. Be great. It's, a, it's it's a beautiful food wine. I yeah, think it's it's a great food. That's wine. a good thing. Most right. of most of anything I would negative, negatively, like, you know, not as gushingly say about it would be uh, drinking it by itself where I'm like, oh, yeah, it's just a little too tightly wound still. So it, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself in terms of ratings. Um, Chris likes this way more than I do, which is odd because normally we are very in sync with the wines that we like. Um, but I find it to be a little bit too, like, on the side of Pinots that I don't care for. Like, for example, the the red cherry comes out more, the hibiscus comes out more for me than the, like, you smell an old book. <laughs> Pinots, which I like. Um, but one of the things that I was kind of talking to him about is that for me, it tastes very um, like sour, acidic, like kind of like I'm licking a tin can almost. Um, and he described the nose as kind of wet dog. And then when we were talking about the wet earth description, it's really more like for me, like wet hay, if that makes sense, like a wet barn more so than wet earth. Yeah, so, um, yeah, hay is not a um, not off the table uh, for for being on there, no no doubt. And I've heard that before with them, like a little hay quality mm -hmm. on there. I'm, I'm good with that. I have no problem with that. But yeah, it's very much more about that that whole food pairing. Kind yeah, of thing. and you know the thing too is those parts that are intriguing you. What this wine is meant for in Burgundy 
talk, right? Is, oh, those parts intrigue you? Go up a notch, right? Oh, that's okay. that's where they go more intense and they sure. come out more. Sure. And that's really where it is. This one is meant to be more of a bridge into Ow. Burgundy. Okay. And it's one of those things where Burgundian wine is is not cheap, right? So, right. so you're coming at a bridge into Burgundy at a, a higher price point right. than a lot of, you know, a lot of casual drinkers, but by Burgundian mm -hmm. style standards, this is a casual drinker. Okay. Right. Right. So the things that she likes about Pinot Noirs, it's a, right. it would be a higher level. Right. Than this. this is entry level and, the, and more of that old world taste and smell that she likes. Mm -hmm is for people that are more serious wine drinkers than really. Right, if you like the well, and, okay. and it does give you, this is what I like about it, it gives you the, the right? you, can, so, yeah. it, you, you get an introduction to say, oh, if you like those things, that's burgundy okay keep keep on you you know with the experience right and if you're if you're drinking this and thinking what the heck with this earthiness and the hay and the you know and i don't want that well then okay then burgundy is not going to be your thing don't pay 80 bucks for your next okay. bottle so that's kind of but i like that it introduces you to those qualities mm -hmm. you know that it does still express as old world with a little bit of a bump up fruitiness mm -hmm. that makes it friendly for new world people to at least enjoy it you know okay. and get in there so well I, I wanted to say that i appreciate that robin mentioned the tin can flavor because <laughs> i've taken a couple of sips and i was like it really has this metallic fla flavor to it and both laura and john are like oh, i'm not getting that it's like, yeah. gosh it's not every sip but every once in a while i keep getting this metallic flavor so thank you robin for making me <laughs> feel like i'm not crazy yeah. It definitely has. I mean, it's got good acid. I mean, the acid pops in there, and I've got a I've got a cranberry bite on there. Um, I wouldn't. I, I'm not getting. I don't get tin can. Tea. I wouldn't put it there. But so Jeff isn't getting it, which means you're both wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Taste close. All right. But I get there's plenty of acidity, and it's that thing where you're like, you want food with that because that acid oh, yeah, for sure. with a little bit of tannin with that. Oh, oh, it makes your makes your food pop right yeah. yeah so but that's what it's for like but by itself because you have a more like drinking a pinot by itself i prefer russian river okay. russian river california within sonoma valley right mm -hmm. that is a much higher oaked more aggressively oaked pinot noir high quality pinot noir mm -hmm. high quality but aggressive oaking mm -hmm. if you're going to drink it by itself it brings out i think it's delicious um, it, but it's a very different expression from Burgundy. Well, but old wines are meant to be meal wines. They're right. meant to be consumed with food. I right. mean, that's, I think that, that that difference there is kind of huge, really, that American wines mm -hmm. are, are meant to be, gener if we're going to generalize, right. that we know Americans sit around drinking without having food. Right. But that's not a European not a thing. European 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 have six-hour meals that we don't have. Right. So yeah, and there's another. There, there are other two other that I can think of, classically well-made wines uh -huh. that can be difficult to drink without food and get you that metallic thing, which mm -hmm. I would say pennies in my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, certain um, Chianti, okay, right. So if you have certain Chiantis, high-acid Chiantis, no food with it. I'm saying, oh my gosh, I get like a pennies in my mouth quality. Yeah. You know? And the same thing with um, some high end, uh, some beautiful Riojas, mm -hmm. right? Rioja can be really high acid. And if you're not eating food with it, it can be a challenge because it's just, it's not getting what it needs. It's just very tart, high pitched notes that are almost sharp. So is it, it's the acid notes that give us a metallic taste? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you have acid and you have minerality in the wine, mm -hmm. which is a positive, right? Right. And they hit together and you end up with a metallic taste. Okay. And you've, I mean, you've said this before, but when we are getting those certain tastes and certain aromas, it's because the molecular structure is the same as those actual things, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That Some is wines to be, mm -hmm. that's why we're getting those tastes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, but it's not that there's, you know, cranberries in it or raspberries in it or whatever it's that that the, the molecules are actually the same right okay yeah you know one of the things that um often wine uh reviewers will say mm -hmm. and you'll think how can you write that 
But this is how you can write that. When you're talking about those metallic point notes, mm -hmm. right? You're saying, but you're you're dealing with a red wine. They will sometimes describe it as raw meat. I'm like, oh, it's raw meat because it's a bloodiness, right? Because there's metal well, in our blood. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, I'm not saying that's in here, but it just reminded me of that description. Taste the blood. We had one in the store that was very, very popular. Okay. That one of the things, and I took it off the list, mm -hmm. um, was listed was like raw hamburger meat. As, you as know, know. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah, please don't ever put that on the list. Okay. No, I, I took it off. No, I, yeah. Good. Good. Um, and we do have a couple of comments okay. about or Oregon Pinot, so Oregonian Pinot, right. Willamette Valley. And that's why I didn't like Keontae for so long from Ramen. Oh, yeah. from the Tartness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oregonian is a wonderful bridge between Burgundy and New World, okay. right? So it's this thing where it's one foot in each, New World, Old World. It's a wonderful bridge. And it's one of the reasons people are loving Oregonian Pinot Noir so much. And it's exploding in popularity. So high quality stuff, usually. So. Oh, Julie is leaving. She says, it's so yummy. Happy to see all your faces. We have to get the kids to bed. Yeah. Stupid time change. Hi, right. Lily Joy. <laughs> Good night, guys. Love you. Night. <laughs> all right, let's do the ratings. Okay, the ratings. Okay. Let's get on to it. Yep. Because actually we need to eat too. So all right. So the ratings. So this guy's got round of 90. Like they put it up there and said, hey, this is a well-made Burgundian, more casual drinking mm -hmm. style wine. So I'm going to guess, you know, what they're the coalescence of what they're doing is is it delicious? Is it well made? Is it well made for the price point? And is it well made for the price point within that region? Right. Yeah. So since it goes up to thousands of dollars within burgundy mm -hmm. right so and very quickly gets up into 60s so uh, when you have one for half that price then yeah. sure sure so anyway that would be my understanding of what they're doing hey was, it, was this a very good wine with special qualities hey I, i'm glad i drank it was that a superior wine say you know what considering all the things i just said yeah that does pop it up a few extra points something like that is it a classic wine? You want to serve this uh, at your uh, third wedding? You know, or... at your third wedding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's the third times. <laughs> we got two. Third, third times the charm. Yeah. Right. Or is it a good wine? Hey, that's well made. I like that wine. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Throw okay. your thoughts out there. Let's see what the TTP thinks okay. of it the typical tasting panel so chris says 90 jerry says 90 88 from the whole group all right 388 okay. three robin 87 88 i do think it opened up not my favorite peanut noir iteration though mm -hmm. okay waiting to hear from brenda and the signers Eighty-seven. I'm drinking it without food. Right. I might have rated it higher. Yeah, right. sure. Yeah. Okay. So Rachel, ninety. David with Robin on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Eighty-seven, eighty-eight. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I like. I like the ratings. I think that's. I think that's very fair. I would do a ninety. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would. I would do a ninety. What I like that would make it a ninety-seven, eighty-eight to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Is I like the tannins for me to pair it with some more robust meals, and okay. that acid will play with that fat if you mm -hmm. can because it gives you more options. Mm -hmm. I think that would you if you had it with one of those, it, right. I think it would pop it right up. Okay, right. so I'm imagining that in my head because I would like by itself drinking it alone. I get the 88s. I do sure with food. I bet you I'd pop up from 90. So okay, that's where I'm going. Yeah, at. so. I like, and that's the whole range. And that's what, and we have people drinking in the, the whole. So sure. I think all of this was very fair and well rated. I mean, it's it's worthy of it. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. So next week, um, we have to thank our sources, and then next week we do. Okay. Should we all so. guess? Wine Volley, Wikipedia, <laughs> Wine.com, Wine.com, the 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 vineyard itself. Yep. Okay. Um, seven fifty. 
Sip and Psalm. That was a new resource and they were great. I really liked them. Yeah. And then and the bone, bone tourism. tourism. Yeah. Okay. So that was the pictures. I went and I saw, I happened to choose pictures I liked and they were again and again from the same one. And I thought, oh, well, thank you very much, Bone Tourism. <laughs> that made my life a little easier today. Thank you. All right. So next week. All right. We are going to stay in the old world. Okay, cool. We're heading to one of my favorite regions of Italy, Veneto. We're going to have a ripasa. Ripasa. So what is a ripasa? Maybe I should just make it one wait till next week. Don't, right? Yeah. So mushroom ragu. Right. All right. Red blend mm -hmm. from North eastern italy okay all right near venice and such mm -hmm. where they make amarone okay they make everyone who makes amarone makes ripasa okay it's a baby amarone it's a baby amarone. right um spicy aromatic punch really good presence great uh great wine so i think it's something that's worth drinking well ratings like 93 and 92 certainly should be intriguing in yeah, addition to definitely. You know. yeah so uh yeah we're going to go into um uh, anyway this should be a lot of fun it's a delicious wine mushroom ragu grilled boar sausage braised short ribs and grilled eggplant with gorgonzola uh see we see and we should tell my mom because she loves doing eggplant she might do eggplant next week that would be awesome yeah. you're gonna eat gorgonzola i do gorgonzola i don't do blue it's in the blue family <laughs> yeah so is feta though and I do that. One. Okay, great. Well, that would be, I would love that. Okay. All right. So that's where we're going. The, uh, yeah, Zanato, uh, an amazing producer. And uh, this is a delicious wine. I hope you guys have joined us. Okay. And we have a chat before we. Yes, we do. Let's see. Oh, oh that's great. There we go. There you go. Look. We got. In sync. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I thought you were just like reading out what I what I said. I was so like, we yeah, were. No, no, we <laughs> we happen to do it completely together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. Our first excursion into Burgundian Rouge. Yes. And uh, thank you, everyone. Cheers. Thanks.